Hey everyone, Hammer Dan here with Hammer Performance. So today we're going to show you how to static time an aftermarket adjustable ignition module. Um, if you've purchased a big bore kit from us, 1250, 1275, or a horsepower package, performance package, um, and it's a carbureted bike, then we're going to have to put a, an aftermarket adjustable ignition module on the bike and static time it correctly so that uh, we get it into safe mode and and max power mode area. So um, today we'll be working with my Buell here. Um, we have a Dyna 2000i nose cone adjustable ignition module. Um, so we're going to go ahead and show you how to static time this module. Uh, the procedure is is basically the same with a plug-in module on some of the earlier Sportsters or whatnot. You have the ignition module um, plugged in from 91 all the way up to uh, through 97. The module is plugged in uh, over, um, underneath the cover on the left-hand side on a Sportster on the bike itself there. So um, this is kind of the, along the same lines of, of static timing it that way. The only difference is the uh, status light, the red status light, which is on the module here in the 2000i, is on the back of the module on the plug-in um, for the Dyna 2000 or Daytona Twin Tech. You know, those are our two choices, Daytona Twin Tech, Dyna 2000i. Those are the two that we really like. Um, and so... Um, if you have a plug-in module on the back of the bike, um, then you're going to have a timing pickup down here, and that's what you'll be rotating to static time it and watching the, the red LED light on the back of the module that's plugged in on the side. So um, usually you can have, if you have a friend that can help you out or whatnot, it makes it a lot easier. Um, Ross will help me today to go ahead and get the bike set up properly to go ahead and static time it. But as I said, today we're working with the Dyna 2000i to, to static time. So the first thing you're going to want to do with your Sportster Buell or whatnot, you're going to want to get it on a lift. If you don't have a lift, bumper of a car, whatever the case may be, you need a jack to jack up the back tire. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, and jack up our back tire here to get it off the ground. So we can bump that tire where we need it. Okay, so once we do that and we're off the ground, then we're going to want to go ahead and uh, you'll want to remove your spark plugs out of the bike. And then uh, once we get the spark plugs out, you're going to go ahead and um, put it in fifth gear. Um, so let's see here. So first gear. And you can always jockey the rear tire back and forth to go through your gears. It makes it easy to get into the fifth gear there. Okay, so we're in fifth gear. Once we got the rear tire in fifth gear, then we're going to go ahead and uh, you're going to want to go ahead and pull your timing inspection plug out of the middle of your cylinders here. Go ahead and unscrew your plug there, set that aside. Now we're able to go ahead and see in there. Boy, it looks like uh, our timing mark is right there, actually. So your timing mark that's on your flywheels there. Um, Ross, could you go grab a flashlight real quick so we can get a better look? Um, so your timing mark, just to, just to clarify here, your timing mark that's on your flywheel assembly is going to be a straight up and down mark that's machined. It's going to be pretty wide, okay? It's not a scratch. It's not a little scuff or anything like that. It's going to be an actual machined mark on the flywheel. So let's take a look in here. Um, believe me, we did not set it up this way, um, but you can see that machined mark in there. Um, we're going to go ahead and rotate this motor around uh, to make sure that we're at top dead center on the compression stroke. So um, the next thing, once you get the, your, your plug out of there, spark, no spark plugs in, um, take the spark plugs out, tire in, 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 you bike in fifth gear so we're able to rotate the tire, then we're going to want to rotate the motor over so that we're at top dead center on the compression stroke. That's very, very important. Top dead center on the compression stroke to static time it. And when we do that and we rotate it over to top dead center on the compression stroke, it's going to put our timing mark in our inspection uh, hole there real close, okay? Rotating it to top dead center on the comp uh, compression stroke gets us close so that we can fine tune it by bumping the tire back and forth to get that machine mark right in the center of our inspection hole there. That's where we need to be. So we're going to go ahead and uh, rotate this motor over. Now, the way that you find top dead center on the compression stroke, best way that I like to do it is I like to go ahead and stick my finger over. And again, if you have two people to do this, it makes it way easier. It's kind of difficult with one person. 
but I'm going to go ahead and put my finger over the front cylinder spark plug hole and what I'm looking for is the once the the motor is rotated over on the compression stroke and the pistons coming up to compress that charge it's going to blow my finger off of the spark plug hole so we want to go ahead and rotate the motor over so that we get it to blow my finger off then I know the pistons coming up and then at that point in time we'll go slow and we'll use a straw or a zip tie to get it all the way up to the top so we'll go ahead and have Ross go ahead and start rotating this motor Okay, it's sucking, it's sucking, okay, through overlap, right there it's starting to blow, okay, so now I'm going to stick a zip tie in here, so keep rotating Ross, oh, back the other way, oh, okay, right, a little bit more, oh, other way, Okay, yep, so now, right, let's go right there. Okay, let's stop right there. So it makes it difficult, and this is why it's good to have two people, because with the spring pressures on our valves opening and closing, our rocker arms opening and closing the springs, it's hard to get it right to that top dead center point because you go a little too far where the piston comes down, then the springs push that motor and rotate that tire, okay, to try to close the valves and open and close the valves. So, um, we get it really, really close here, and now we're at a fine line to bump it forward and backwards, okay? So I got it all the way up to the top there. Let's take a look and see where we're at over here. Um, we'll just let that be, Ross. I think we're okay. Okay, so if we look in there, man, we're right, right there. Um, see that mark right there in the center? Boy, we're like right there. Okay, let me take a look here just to make sure whether we're right in the center, exactly in the center there. Um, Looks like it's boy. retarded just a little tiny bit. But boy, I don't know. That looks pretty dang close if you ask me. You can see that there. Yeah. I mean, that looks really close to me. I mean... I don't know if I'd want to bump it anyway. You can let it go, Ross. Let's see. Yeah, I'm calling that good. That that looks really, really close to me. I mean, I think we're really splitting hairs here when we when we start to look. But man, I, if you take a look straight onto that, I, to me that looks. Yeah. I think that looks really, really close to me. So I'm holding the rear tire with the rear brake until we drop it down, but. That's a trick. So yeah, we can go ahead now. Just go ahead and drop that tire. Hold it right there so she do not rotate on us. Okay. So now we take a look just to make sure we didn't move. Everything looks centered again still. I'm really liking that. I like how that kind of looks in there. I don't know if you can see it. That looks really good to me. Okay, so that was kind of painless. So we got it rotated over, top dead center on the compression stroke, and again, you should see the machined mark right in the center of our hole there, okay? Once we get it to this point, and again, so let's back up a second and talk a little bit about a plug-in module. So we're going to want to do everything the same here. We got the plug-in module. Um, the only difference is we're going to have a timing pickup and not a nose cone. In 2000, uh, 1998 to 2003, they went with a nose cone module, even for stock modules in the Sportsters. Okay, they combined everything down here and got away from the actual plug-in module itself. So from 91 through, uh, through uh, 1997, it's going to be a plug-in module on the left hand side of the bike behind your cover there okay um, so again you want to plug in the Dyna 2000 or Daytona Twin Tech into that plug in there um, it'll have this status red status LED light on there um, and so um, that'll help us to go ahead and static time this so with that being said we're going to go ahead and turn on our power to the bike and we're going to turn on our run switch up here okay now we our VOES light is lit. We're gonna go ahead and 
go ahead and loosen this. Loosen our standoffs here. Now that we have them loose, we should be able to rotate this module forward and backwards. And as you see, as we rotate it back, the, L the status light comes on. As we rotate it forward, it goes off. So rotating it forward, we're advancing the timing clockwise. We're advancing it. Rotating the module counterclockwise, we're retarding the timing. Okay, so keep that in mind. Forward is advancing, counterclockwise is retarding. So we see it come on and off there like that. Okay, you have your instructions that come with the module itself. So we'll go ahead and take a look at these instructions here real quick. So what it tells us for static timing the motor. Um, um, so we did the we did the remove the timing inspection plug. We rotated the bike over crankshaft to top dead center on the compression stroke. Uh, we put the timing the TDC mark in the center of our inspection hole. Um, you know we removed the spark plugs to make it easier. It says rotate the 2000i module uh, to cause the status LED light to turn off and on, and that's what we did. We rotated it clockwise. Um, which is a re uh, advance to make it turn off and then we rotate it back to make it turn on. So careful, carefully follow this next instruction. Find the point where the LED just turns off while rotating the base plate in a clockwise direction and then lock down the 2000i. The initial timing is now set close to optimum. Final timing may be checked and statically uh, and set dynamically. So you can set it dynamically as well. This way works really, really well. You don't have to go out and buy a timing light. Um, we can go ahead and set it this way and be very, 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 very close. Okay, so it says basically to rotate it counterclockwise till the light comes on, and then it tells us to rotate it clockwise until the light goes out and lock it down right there. So we're going to slowly go. I'm just going to play with it until I feel I have it right there and we're gonna lock it down right there now let's talk about advanced slope curves here and what we know about our performance packages and what we found on the dyno so what we found on the dyno for max power and reliability is we want no more than 28 degrees of max advance. Okay, that's our total timing, max advance, and we want it brought in slowly. We want it all in by about 4,500 to 5,000 RPMs. Okay, so what I'm going to show you is how to look at your advanced slope curves that we have, and every module should have our advanced slope curves on here. Okay. Um, we have a retard mode and we have a normal VOES mode. So um, what we want to talk about is the advanced slope curves here with our normal VOES mode advance. Okay, so you're gonna you want to hook up your VOES, so make sure you do that. Okay, and then we're gonna use this chart, not the retard mode. So on one of your switch settings, and we'll get to the switch settings, there's gonna be a VOES setting. That's your first switch, and it's either on or off. If it's in the off position, okay, that's going to give us our normal VOS mode. If it's on, it's going to give us a retard mode, which is usually set up for turbocharged or nitrous applications to retard the timing. Okay, so we want to make sure that's in the off mode and it's giving us our normal VS, VOS mode settings. So if we look here, it has our four curves. The Dyna 2000i has four adjustable curves on there. So what we want to look at is, like I said, a curve that gives us no more than 28 degrees of max advance. So your maximum advance is your flat lines here of your curves, okay? Um, curve one and two are the same as far as flat lining at 35 degrees here, okay? Curve number three um, is um, 30, it looks like about 32 and a half, 32 degrees, okay? Um, it's split between 30 to 35. And then curve number four is 30 degrees of max advance. That's where it flatlines. These other curves here that go with each curve number is our advanced slope, okay, on how fast or how slow we bring in our timing, okay? So, and then down here we have our RPM range. So like I said before, 
on our builds with the 1250-1275s, we want no more than 28 degrees. So as you can see, we our best curve here is curve four, puts us at 30 degrees, but we want no more than 28, and we want it brought in slowly. This is our brought in slowly curve here. Okay, you can see we're on some of them that are grounded. It retards it uh, or it uh, advances that curve really, really fast to max advance. We want it slow. So that's going to be our curve number four here. And as you can see on curve number four, it slowly, gradually climbs to our 30 degrees. And it finally gets there at about 52, roughly 51, 5200 uh, RPMs. That's perfect. Like I said, we want between 4,500 to 5,000 RPMs. We want our all-in timing mark by then. Not curve number one that brings it all in by 3,000, okay? You'll destroy your motor in cruising mode. You'll have a bunch of pinging and, and detonation there if we're on that curve, okay? It's gonna ping and retard and heat build up and scuff pistons. Um, same with uh, curve number two. Curve number two kind of brings it in slow, almost like our curve number four, but it has a max advance of 35 degrees, okay? So that's too advanced as far as our max advance goes, we'll hurt the motor there as well. Curve three brings it in a little softer at 32 degrees, okay? So, um, but we want to get down to that 28 degree mark. So curve four brings it in the softest and 30 degrees. So that's the curve we wanna be on, okay? Now, with that being said, what we wanna do at this point in time, we know that the best curve to get us close to 28 degrees is curve number four, and it brings it in softly. So we wanna be on that curve. And then what we're gonna do here with the Dyna 2000 eyes or any other module that doesn't quite get us to 28 degrees, we are gonna to wanna to take, you can use a pocket knife or a um, uh, X-Acto knife or a blade, whatever you've got. And we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and make a mark on our timing pickup here. Let me get in here and see real quick so I can do it. And then we're going to make a mark. And then on the cam cover itself to line up with that mark. Okay, flashlight. So as we can see there, you see that mark I have in there. We have a, a reference mark, okay? That's what we want. Once we get that reference mark, we're then gonna go ahead and loosen our standoffs because what we wanna do now is we want to retard our maximum advance. So rotating the module clockwise and counterclockwise, okay, raises our maximum advance. So we had the 30 degrees on curve four. If we rotate it clockwise, we advance it. So now we make it from 30 to 32, 34, 35, 38 as we rotate it clockwise. As we rotate it counterclockwise, we're going to retard the timing and bring it down 30, 28, 26, 25, 24. So in this instance, we want to get to 28 degrees, okay? Um, and so we're going to want to rotate it counterclockwise to bring it down two degrees. Our advanced slope curve stays the same since we're on four, it's gonna bring it in softly, but now we're able to, by rotating the advanced slope curve, we're able to raise or lower the timing mark there, okay, on our maximum advance. So we're gonna loosen our standoffs, we have our reference mark, and we're gonna rotate it counterclockwise approximately 30 thousandths of an inch at the perimeter, okay? That's not a whole lot. Okay, very, very minimal there. Um, you can take a calipers if you have it and open it to 30 thousandths of an inch and take a look at the gap that you got there. It's pretty minimal. Ross, you wanna grab a caliper? We'll just show that here real quick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and loosen my standoffs here. Okay, from where we're at. We, and again, we have our reference mark. And I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it counterclockwise about 30 thousandths of an inch. So let's take a look here at 30 thousandths of an inch. Usually I tell people it's about a width of a pen length. So if you took a pen, a ballpoint pen, and drew a mark across a piece of paper, the width of that pen length, okay, is gonna give us that 30 thousandths. So I don't know if you can see that there on what 30 thousandths is, it's not a whole lot. It's very, very minimal there. 
okay if you kind of look I don't know best way to see that or whatnot but it's very very minimal okay so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna rotate it 30 thousandths of an inch so I can see here where my reference mark is counterclockwise from my reference point which is about right there and of course when you do that your lights gonna come back on if you still have the power on snug those babies down all right so there we have it let's take a look here you can kind of see my my scribed mark there and how we've rotated it about 30 thousandths or so like I say it's about a pen width counterclockwise that's very very important okay um, this is going to put us in that safe range and max power range, okay? Now, of course, we know on the dyno from testing, some bikes are going to make some power at 26 degrees, 27. Some bikes are going to make max power at 29, 30, somewhere in there. You really won't know that unless you put it on the dyno, okay? Now we're splitting hairs here. Setting the bike up this way with this timing set up, putting the proper jetting that we suggest for your carburetor in the bike is going to get us 90% of the way there. Some people are very happy with that, 90, 95%. Some might, it might even be closer to 100, but it's not going to be perfect, perfect. The only way you're going to get it perfect, perfect is on a dyno, where we can actually play with our timing pickup. I know on the dyno, and that's what I'll do with this bike, and we'll show you that later on when I go to tune my bike here on, on um, how I'm going to find max power with that. I'm basically going to leave it on curve four, but I'm going to rotate my timing pickup and make marks on there. Rotate it, make some pulls. Did it like it? Did it not like it? If it liked it, we'll rotate it more until power falls off. Okay, then we go back to our best notch that we've marked on there that made max power. Okay, so that way we're dialing it in perfectly. Same with jetting, we're gonna change our jetting up and down small increments to find max power to see which jet it likes and makes the most power on and voila, you have a perfectly tuned bike. Um, but setting it up and static timing it this way is gonna get us spot on, safe mode, reliability, and it's gonna get us 90% of the way there as far as you know, setting the bike up to, to, to do the package and, and get all the power out of the bike. Um, other than that, I think that's it. Like I say, you can dynamically tune this or static time, you know, time the dang thing with a timing light. I don't think you have to go through all that. If you're good at it and you deal with cars and everything else, by all means, you, you can surely do that, okay? Just keep in mind, it's not just maximum advance here that we're concerned with. It's also the advanced slope curve. That's very, very, very important here is the advanced slope curve. Some of the modules that are out there, like the Ultima, you don't want to use the Ultima, even though we're able to turn it down on curve four to 30 degrees of max advance, it does not give us the soft slope that we're looking for. And if we have an aggressive slope there, we no matter, even though we're turned down to 28 degrees of max advance, that, that timing is going to come in really fast at really low RPMs and it's going to mess up our cruising area and whatnot and we're going to have detonation and pinging and, and we're going to scuff pistons, okay? So keep that in mind, we, we want it no more than 28 degrees of max advance and we want it brought in slowly all of it in by about 4500 to 5000 rpms that's our sweet spot there okay so read read your schematics when you get the module to see where you're at and what you need to do what curve you need to be on or what else you need to do to get to that sweet spot setting okay um, other than that we're timed uh, we're static timed here um, and uh, it's that simple. It's not rocket science. So if you if you have any questions or anything, by all means, let us know. Um, other than that, I think that's about it. Um, you guys have anything else to add? You think no. got it covered? Um, other than that, follow us, subscribe, whatever the case, in the upper corner, downer corner, whichever corner, who knows which corner it is. Um, like us on Facebook. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram. Peace out.